Sometimes we all need to realize that we're members one of another, that we need to be able to get along and to go along on heaven's road. We need to remember that we're part of the same body, of the same nation, of the same army, of the same kingdom, of the same church. In Ephesians chapter 4, we have a lot of passages where Paul mentions the, the phrase, one another. And I hope that we can learn something from it. And if you will, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. So we're going to read the whole chapter this morning. And I hope that we can begin to glean something from it. And before we get down to what Kyle just read for us, I'd like for us to look at the whole chapter beginning in verse 1 so that we get the good amount of context with where we need to be. <coughs> Paul says in Ephesians 4 verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. And we'll talk more about vocation in just a moment. But the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity, the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he has said when he has ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and had gave gifts unto all men. Now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And we know how both in Ephesians and Colossians talk. Paul talks about the fullness of Christ. He goes on to say he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. This is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or complete man, unto the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We're all to be one. We're all to meet the mark that Christ has set before us. Even though we all have different parts to play and different offices to fulfill, we all are one of another meeting the mark, the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth, verse 14, be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby by laying way to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in him all things, which is the head, even Christ, for whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. How much unity does Paul talk about in the first 16 verses of chapter 4? A lot. We're of the same vocation. We're all called to meet the same measure and the stature of fullness of Christ. We're all part of the same body, fitly joined and framed together. We all need to be working together. There's a phrase we use a lot of times, and there's variations on it, right? Too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Too many chefs in the kitchen. Do you know there's... We all have different parts to play and sometimes we don't want to work together. We don't want to cooperate. We don't want to be part of one another. I want this to be more about me and what I want and what I desire. We need to figure out this morning that we're all working, laboring with one another, loving each other, preferring one another. Uh, it's wonderful to look through the New Testament. And if you have opportunity, maybe one day this week, you can take your concordance or you can take your, your olive tree app and you just search for one another and study all the passages that are mentioned with one another in the New Testament. But we want to talk today about working with one another. And we're going to get started here in verse 17. 
because we are one another in our profession. Remember, Paul says that vocation to which you are called. That requires us, verse 17 through 19, to leave our old occupations. Look at verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Paul, speaking to the Christians there at Ephesus, they used to be Gentiles, most of them. Don't walk as other Gentiles walk. You are in a new vocation. You've moved on to a new job. Don't act and behave the way you used to. Don't have the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, don't be like the folks you used to be like. Be new creatures. We continue reading verse 19. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. And I think we know something about lasciviousness and greediness here in America today. Paul says... Beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. To do that, we have to leave our old occupations. We have to leave a new company to start working for the company of Christ, as it were. Romans 6, Paul discusses this very act with the congregation in Rome. What shall we say then, Paul says? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Well, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We leave that old person, that old vocation, that old occupation behind when we're baptized into Christ. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 11, Paul said, And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. We are part of a new group of individuals. We're not part of the old anymore. If we're going to be one another in our profession, we need to make sure we're putting on our new uniforms. Right? Right? Not only do we take off and we put away that which is old, and we ought to do that with abandon. We ought to flee from those old occupations of sin and death and shame. We ought to want to get rid and burn and put to death those old uniforms. For a period of my life, I worked in a factory where we did a lot of work with fiberglass. If you've ever worked with fiberglass, you know how itchy it was. When I quit that job and went to the school of preaching, I put off that old uniform. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to touch it. I didn't want to be around it. I wanted to completely remove myself from it and go on to something else. That's the way we have to be spiritually. We put off walking as other Gentiles did. But look at what happens in verse 20. Paul says, but you not old soul learn Christ. That's not the way that you learned of Christ, he says. Verse 21, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. For as many of us have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Galatians 3 and verse 27. We are members one of another. We all wear the same thing because we all work in the same place. Why do school children have to wear school uniforms some places? We don't want people dressing better and elevating themselves and distinguishing themselves above somebody else. If we make everybody wear the same thing, it creates a sense of unity. We all wear Christ. 
because we all work in the vineyard of the king. We're all in the same place, the same vocation, the same profession. We are all one of another where we go to work at in the kingdom of our Lord. And I hope that we see that. And we're all one in Christ. Neither bond free, Jew, Greek, male, female, rich, poor, doesn't matter. We're all one. The gospel is for all. We understand that just as Paul mentions here, some are given to be pastors or shepherds or elders. Some are deacons. Only two offices mentioned in the church. But we all work and pull together one of another. Not only just in our profession, but in our production as well. What do we mean when we talk about our production? <coughs> Halting unsafe spiritual practices. And it says 25 through 30, and I want to look at the first parts of all these verses. Paul's generally giving us a contrast. We stop lying and we start speaking the truth. Well, let's see all the things that we have to stop doing. Because if you've ever worked anywhere in the secular world, there's, there's unsafe practices, right? There's certain things that you can't do, and you have, to, you have to stop those things. Well, there's certain things, if we're all working for Christ, that we have to stop doing. Wherefore, Paul says, putting away lying, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So when we do have instances to be angry, we need to do it without sin. We don't need to let our wrath continue day to day. We don't need to give place or opportunities to the devil. Let not him that steals, let him that stole steal no more. We can't lie. We can't give place and temptation and opportunity to the devil. We can't continue theft of whatever that is. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. How do we do that? Well, we do things that he has commanded us not to. The Holy Spirit has given us the inspired word of God. We grieve God and Christ and the Spirit when we go things and do things rather contrary to to his will and his word. We have to stop lying. Start have, stop having evil communication come from our mouth. We don't have to lie or say a, an ugly four-letter word to say something that's hurtful or corrupt or bad. We say plenty of those things without being vulgar or without lying. We have to stop stealing things, committing theft. We have to think that there's all sorts of ways that we can commit theft, right? We steal something. Or we deny something that somebody else should have. We go back to the minor prophets. We see that they were stealing from God. They were denying Him in their tithes and offerings, in their worship. We can steal by lying and deceiving folks. There's all sorts of ways that folks commit theft today. and We're going to have to halt all those things. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 <coughs> abstain from all or every appearance of evil. If it looks unsafe spiritually, we got to stop it. We can't just continue on that grace may abound. Paul says, God forbid. No, we stop that. If we're going to work for the Lord, there's certain things we can no longer do. If we're going to halt things that are unsafe spiritual practices, we need to increase Fruitful productivity. Every place I've ever worked at, what do they want? They want you to be more productive. You're working on a factory. They want you to increase productivity. We need to, we need to meet this quota. It seems like every time you meet quota, they come and they, they raise it by five or ten pieces. You, well, we need you to do a hundred of these widgets every day. Well, you do a hundred for two days in a row. Josh, that's great. We need a hundred and ten widgets tomorrow. And they, they keep going, I think, until you reach wherever you're able to go. But, you know, the Lord expects the same thing out of us. As newborn babes in Christ, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Peter says you, you do this when you're a young Christian, and when you're an older Christian, you can do a little more. And when you're an older Christian, you can do a little more than that. And we can always do a little more for the Lord. We can always stop more unsafe spiritual practices, and we can always increase the fruitful productivity that we have in the Lord. 
Now let's go back to verse 25 and see how we adjust these things. Putting away line, right? Stop line. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members, there's that phrase again, one of another. Don't deceive anybody. Everybody speak that which is true. We may think that we're saving people their feelings. We may think that we're making situations easier, but we're not. It's so much harder to keep up with things when we lie. Who did we tell what to? If you always tell the truth to everybody, you'll never have to keep up with something different. So much easier and simpler and righteous to speak the truth every man to his neighbor. Be angry and sin not. We understand our Lord was angry, righteous anger, right? Through the money changers out of the temple. There are times where we can be angry, but we need to do it without sin. There's a line there that we ought not to cross. We ought not to let our son go down upon our wrath, and I think every married couple's heard that. Don't go to bed angry. Because then you wake up tomorrow and you're still angry sometimes, and it's so easy to carry on. What's that mean? We don't need to let these things continue on until they fester in our hearts and our souls to the point where we can't have a good relationship with our spouse or our children or one of another, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Neither give place to the devil. We go back to 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 22. We abstain from every appearance. If it even looks like the devil's involved, don't be. But we need to stay out. We need to make sure that we are giving him no room. The devil's really good at squeezing in any crack we leave, any chink in our armor. And we have to do our dead level best to give no place for the devil to get a handhold on our life. Let him that stole steal no more. And how do we fix that? But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good. So not only can he provide for himself, but he can give it to him that needeth. We don't need to steal. I understand that Robin Hood stole from the rich and gave to the poor. Paul says, why don't you just work? If you need something, work. If somebody else needs something. So that we can work with our hands the thing that is good. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So what do we say if we can't use corrupt and hurtful and debasing communication? Well, Paul says, let that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Think about this. Is it easier to tear something down or to build something up? James has a whole chapter just about, chapter 3, devoted to the use of our tongues. Why? Because we get in more trouble with our mouths than we do any other piece of our body. More trouble is started by somebody letting evil communication proceed from their lips than it is with any amount of fists. Think about it. Don't let evil communication proceed from your mouth, but that which is to the use of building up. What would your mama say? If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Why? Because it's so easy to say something and tear someone down. If you can say something nice and build them up, that is so much more useful and beneficial to the grace of the hearers. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Live the way God wants us to live. That's how we increase our fruitful production in the Lord. And it gets us to what Paul says in the book of Colossians. Whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name or by the authority of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Everything we say, everything we do, needs to be something that is God-approved. That will take care of almost any problem you have, I guarantee it. You want to increase fruitful productivity in the service of the Lord? Make sure that you have a Thus Saith the Lord, a book, chapter, and verse for everything you do, and you never have to worry about anything. One another in progression... I want to continue this thought here. Leaving old jobs and habits behind. This gets us to where Paul ties this together in verse 31 and 32. Not only do we have to quit unsafe practices and quit the jobs, we have to make sure we continue with that. 
He says in verse 31, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, along with all malice. Along with all malice. And I want to start there, and then we'll back up. Put it away from you like those old work uniforms. I didn't want to touch them again. Along with all malice. When we come up out of the watery grave of baptism and we're raised to walk in newness of life, we are carrying sometimes a lot of baggage. Emotional and spiritual baggage. We just got done talking about Noah in class this morning. We're covering Genesis chapter 6. I wonder, and this is something we can't prove, but this is things we wonder about when we study Noah. How much baggage did he have when he came off the ark? People he knew and wanted there to be with him, but they didn't. Was that anger or frustrating to him? I know for a fact that when we baptize folks, they come out. And even though they're raised to walk in newness of life, everything that was there in life is still there. All the bad relationships and then the hurt, and we have to... When we leave a job, are we bitter sometimes? The way things ended or the, you know, the, way that, the way that things worked out. Maybe we quit, maybe we got fired, maybe our severance wasn't what we thought it should be. Maybe, whatever. And we're bitter about it. When we leave our old occupation of sin, we, we leave it with, along with all the malice and the bitterness and we just let it go. I could ask all the parents in the room to start singing that song about let it go, but we know, right? We know what it means to just let it go and start fresh. Without all the malice and the bitterness and the emotional baggage that comes with it, Paul says, put away from you. Not only all the bitterness, but the wrath, the anger, all the clamor, the evil speaking, just let it go. Paul's talking about an individual in the congregation at Corinth, but we understand how it can apply to us as well. He said, Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Talking about that one member in the congregation. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump. As you are unleavened for even Christ, our Passover, that unleavened feast is sacrificed for us. When we're baptized, we have to get rid of all that old leaven. We can't hold on to it. We can't cling to it. We baptize folks. It's for the remission of their sins. And it's an immersion in the water. We want to make sure that the whole body is clean. That we don't miss any pockets. Or Sometimes it seems like we come out to walk in newness of life. That old dead man is trying to hold on to our ankles. When we leave, we need to leave. It needs to be a clean break. So that we can move on to a better and broader future. Look at verse 32 as we end chapter 4. And be ye kind one to another. There's that phrase again. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. When we come up and we progress, not only do we have the same kind of production, but we have the same progression. We're growing and we're getting better as we work for Christ. And we're moving forward. We're clean breaking with all those things that have come before. And we want a better, a broader, a bigger future. Something that's eternal. How do we do that? We put away those things. We be kind, tender hearted, and forgiving. Sometimes it's hard to be kind. Sometimes it's really hard to be tender. Sometimes it's hard for us to forgive. But we need to remember we need to do that even as God has forgiven us with Christ. Think about it. How do we do that? We get rid of all those other things. And Paul says in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. If you think on the things that are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report, it's going to be a lot, a lot easier for you to forgive 
to be tender and to love each other. If we're thinking about the good things of everyone. And we're trying to understand that we all work together. We have the same uniform. We have the same boss. We live in the same kingdom. We're part of the same army. And we're all striving to be one another, laborers together, one another in Jesus Christ. We're all part of the same family, one of another, in the same profession. We work in the same company. We all have, we all have the same things to do. One of another in the same production, producing similar fruit of the same kind. We don't all produce the same fruits. Not everybody can preach or teach. Not everybody can do campaign work. Not everybody can, you know, some people are wired to do different things. But even though it's similar fruit, not the same, every apple that comes off the tree is still an apple, even though it's slightly different. We all work the works of righteousness. We all do the will of God, even though we serve in different areas and different offices and do different things. We can all be productive in the kingdom when we work one with another. Because we're one another in the same progression, constantly and consistently growing in Christ. That's why it's so important for us to be one of another this morning. To be part of the church that is Christ's. To be part of His family. Soldiers in His army. Citizens in His kingdom. One another. Are you part of one another this morning? Are you a Christian? Are you part of the kingdom and the army and the nation of God? If not, you can be so this morning by hearing God's word and obeying it. Believing in Christ, repenting of sins, confessing His name, being baptized into water for the forgiveness of sin, raised to walk in newness of life. You can have salvation today. You can't join the church, but the Lord says He will add you to it if you obey His will and are saved. You can be part one of another. We all want to work somewhere that we love going to work. We all want to be part of a, a great team. We want to work with folks who are like family to us. Well, here's your opportunity this morning. You want to be part of the kingdom of Christ? Come to Him. But maybe you're here for whatever reason this morning and you're part of His kingdom. But you're not working the way that you need to. You're not developing the relationship one with another that you know you ought to be. And you want prayers for strength or encouragement or forgiveness. The Lord's invitation is extended this morning if you want to be one of another with us here in the kingdom of Christ to be one of His children, one of the workers in His vineyard. The invitation is extended if you were one of those and for whatever reason have wandered away, don't. Come back. Obtain salvation. Retain your salvation this morning. Have the prayers for strength and encouragement as we stand and as we sing.